no Max, no JQ. I wasn't even supposed to do this podcast, but uh, you know, my other co-host on the on-road side had some drama this weekend, so I got him on her. I mean, wanted to get him on her to talk about um on-road for a while. So he he had some time before he heads out to the nationals. But uh, let's drop that intro, and then uh, we're gonna get talking to my good buddy Hefty, my good buddy Hefty. Uh, so with that said, let's drop that intro and get on with this. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Alessi the Great, with co-host and guest as they get together to chat our city. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Yes, indeed, not just the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. But on this podcast, it's all about ten scale onward. What's up, everybody? It's episode number two one one of the No Name RC podcast. That's right, summer two eleven. I'm your host, Keenan White, and joining me a little bit later is my co-host, Hefty from Sampadal, USA. We're going to talk about his. He had some drama at his onward race this past weekend up there in New York. A lot of people brought that to my attention, and then I hit him up to find out what happened. He says, let's record about it so I can tell everybody what happened. And it was good because I wanted to pick his brain anyway about the world and what he thought about that with uh, Bruno and all this different stuff. So it was a great 10-scale uh, onward chat, which I'm starting to like a lot more. And thank you to Hefty for his time. But before I go on any further, uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys, the NNRC squad around the world. I can't do it without you guys. Thank you for all the continued support. If you guys are just picking up on this podcast for the first time. Please hit the like, sub, notification, dislike button, leave a comment on the YouTube channel. Let's help grow that. If you are listening to this on the, our audio platforms, please leave a review. If you like it or not, let us go. It helps us all get into this algorithms. Thank you to the NNRC squad around the world. Thank you to the patrons of the podcast. Max and I dropped a patron only pod this week. You also get, uh, uh, sorry, early access to this podcast as well. So if you wish to become a patron of the podcast, you can. There's a link in the written description as well. We have YouTube membership for $1.99 a month for the cost of a cup of coffee. A month, you can support the podcast and become an NNRC member, and you will get early access to, to all of this as well. So shout out to all of our sponsors. Remember, we have coupon codes, affiliate links, all the written descriptions down in the written description of this podcast. Sorry, links in the written description of this podcast. I always get this tongue twisted. But they are Invisible Speed, TZO 200 Tires, TNR Fuels, High Tech RC, Beach RC, Mayako, Lugs Racing Tires, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic, G-Spec RC Tuning, Sampadal USA, Racecraft USA, RCGP, House of RC, Clinic RC. Shout out to my the driver, NNRC drivers. They are David Ronafog, Alexander Hagberg, Tebow, Jared Tebow, and Robert Badier. So if you guys can, remember we have, like I said, affiliate links, coupon codes to all those sponsors. Also remember right now, Invisible Speed running a special. If you sign up for the Invisible Speed course in the month of October, you get entered in the chance to win either a Mugen, specifically built by Robert Badier, or a Mayako, specifically built by uh, David Ronafog. So whoever wins gets to choose between a Mugen and a Mayako, and then whoever comes second, they get what's ever left over. It's not a bad deal. You sign up for a year, you get knowledge, and you can win a car. So check that out at invisiblespeed.net. 
Also, we got some affiliate links with B2RC. Uh, we, we have coupon codes with G Spec RC tuning, Papa Willis Traction Tonic, Lugs Racing Tires, uh, Racecraft USA with their Wild Drew models. And uh, check them out and uh, help us out, man. Sharing the sponsor some, sharing the advertiser some love, shows the podcast some love. With that said, I just want to shout out real quick uh, because I wasn't planning on doing a podcast this week, but Max and I did talk about it. Uh, we saw that uh, Borak Killick won four wheel drive at Workshop EOS this weekend. Well done to Borak. Uh, well done. Job well done. Also, Neil Craig came out and won two wheel drive. Unique circus surface at Workshop. First time I really paid attention to it. Made for some great racing. Really enjoyed it. So the Skidmores did well there as well. So lots of things. Max and I geeked out on that. I think I saw Boots win at the Angaro race that they had this past weekend, which was good too. And of course, I am gearing up to go to RCGP, which is this weekend at the Badlands in Myrtle Beach. I'll be flying out. I'm looking forward to hanging out with all the Northeast people that are coming down, all the Southeast races that are coming to this race. It's going to be the second round in America. And uh, it looks like no Angaro, unfortunately, no Canas. But we got Peko, we got David Ronafal Campus coming over, uh, CFT, Aiden Horn, Cody Watson's going to be racing. I don't, BTRC hasn't named their, their racers yet, but I have an idea who it is. I saw Bobby Moore's building the track. I look forward to seeing what Bobby comes up with. And uh, yeah, good weekend. And then I'm staying for Mod. Looks like Chris Sarkis is staying for Mod. So yeah, we're doing it big. Two weeks, two weeks. And if you didn't hear, we're doing a, a Latin America tour, the Invisible Speed Latin America tour coming up uh, next month in November. It's going to be me, JQ, and Robert Badier. Cool stuff. So I guess I don't really have much to say. Like I said, this was an impromptu podcast. Uh, Hefty was like, oh, let's make a podcast about it. I was like, sure. Well, I said, should we do a podcast? Yeah, let's do a podcast. Anyway, here is an hour and 20 minutes of Hefty and Lefty talking on road. What happened at the NYGP, New York GP, why he thinks what onward needs to grow. We talk about roar. We talk about a lot of things. With that said, let's get over and see what Hefty has to say. So joining me for this impromptu podcast, I want to say, if uh, some incident that happened over the weekend is joining me, my non-Hefty co-host, my 10 scale guy, my on road guy, also import of Sampadal Racing Batteries USA, which nobody still won from the last podcast, by the way. Uh, they don't know how good the goat is, man. I know. So we'll go back and listen to that episode. And I think maybe my buddy might have won. I have to check it. But you have you could win some Sampadal batteries, uh, racing batteries, Sampadal USA racing batteries. Courtesy of this man right here. I think what we're going to have to do is make some of these uh, quizzes easier, you know? You know, every time I do a Christmas show and I have all these nice quiz questions and nobody ever gets them. So, what's up, Hefty? Um, you've been busy. I haven't really, we haven't done anything since episode 203, which was the 10 scale uh, Euro, or, Euros, Nationals, Dart Nationals. Yeah, we've had a ten scale worlds, which has had uh, accusations of cheating. We've had a lot of we've had a ten scale nationals, nitro nationals down in Puerto Rico right after a hurricane. Yep, we have had we have a is it the Bangkok worlds this year or is it next year? I I don't even know what what classes are we ten doing scale in nitro sedan. You're talking. You might as well be speaking Spanish to me right now. Okay, so you don't. Do I don't know anything stuff. about nitro, bro. Except that okay. The motors are a pain in the butt to tune. Well, and they're expensive and you need a lot for on-road. Um, all right. So, and then you're headed on to the nationals for electric racing, right? Where's that yep. to? Uh, it's going to be in, um, in Florida, uh, on the uh, east coast of Florida, about an hour south of uh, Orlando's airport. Okay. In uh, a town called Grant Valkaria. And um, the track is actually on... Um, the grounds of a small, like regional airport. Mm, okay. And this is outdoor asphalt. Asphalt. Right? Yep. Outdoor okay. asphalt. Um, this uh, club hosted uh, the roar nationals in 2016. And um, I, I still kind of remember that race pretty vividly. We had um, 
you know, uh, the Osmax team did really well. We won all the slow classes. And then in the, um, in the fast class for mod touring, there was an epic battle between, um, Cav and, um, Rick Howard. And uh, okay. Howard, Howard got the shorter end of the stick. Let's just put it that way. He must not have been happy uh, about that. I, I don't think he probably was. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, both of them, you know, on asphalt are tremendous drivers. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think either of them will be at this this no. year's um, regional, I'm sorry, world or uh, nationals. World nationals. But, um, you know, maybe they will be someday. You know, Sam um, Isaac's the favorite to win this. Well, <clears throat> Sam, um, Sam's won uh, a lot of carpet. Uh, right, asphalt. He, asphalt. He won uh, at Jackson last year, which is basically a, a relatively local track to us uh, or to him. Now I, I'm not in that neighborhood anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm trying to remember what happened in, I guess, 21. There was no nationals because mm-hmm. Jackson was supposed to have it, but COVID screwed that up. And then, um, I don't know. I, I'd have to think back. But who's the favorite going into this year's nationals? Then, in, at this race, um, there's probably three guys uh, that can get it done. So, um, in the local scene, um, there is uh, an express driver um, who, uh, a long time ago, he used to refer to it as Panda Express. Mm. And uh, uh, so the the funny part is um, this uh, this racer and I, I don't know why we have no notes so we're all just like free balling this. We're free balling this. Yeah. So uh, I I we need a chat function I can see so people can tell me what uh the name I'm missing right now in my head. Um, but anyway, well, uh, I, I kind of lead into this something here. So continue. I just want to know who the favorite American guys are. And well, yeah, and so. You know, generally, um, it's uh, uh, why can't I remember this guy's name? Oh, I feel so bad. He's a McLan Express driver. Uh, anyway, I'm shot, so it's been a hell so, of a week. Hefty can't figure out it, and I have no idea who he's talking That's about. That's fine, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute. We'll get we'll figure it. Um, also local would be Dave Vera. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave is an infinity driver, and uh, he also runs for Phantom, <clears throat> and um. He uh, has a good shot at it, uh, realistically. Um, traveling in um, would be uh, Sam Isaacs, who has a great shot. Um, then um, we also have uh, two X-ray guys. Uh, one is Mike G, and the other one is um, Chris Adams. Uh, Mike and Chris both went down to um, Valkyria probably like two, three weeks ago. Uh, took um, were part of the Florida State Series, mm-hmm. and um, they did pretty well. They got rained out, of course, because that seems to be all that's happening right now in Florida. Um, uh, me, me um, Sam Isaacs, and Craig Xavier went two weeks prior to that. Um, <clears throat> we were there for two days, and we might have gotten six hours of running uh, because of just rain. And uh, that was probably the most expensive RC weekend I've ever had. If you look at how many laps I got to do. Uh, Is this for, where you message me asking about RC boats? Yes. Okay. What? There we go. Yeah. We, we contemplated go. thinking about how do we do boat racing in this like little like pond thing that was next to the track. Cause it, it was just fucking chaos, dude. Might've been uh, alligators in there, dude. No, there was. He got a little big, so they got him out of there. Um, in 2016, there definitely was. And um, at 2016 race, um, I think Paul Chicarello was there, and we were, you know, contemplating like like throwing him in. Um, I could be wrong about that. If not, it's still funny. Um, the, the guys, the guy's name who I now thought about um, is Felix Law. And so, right, Felix, I've heard that name before. Felix is probably. Um, he's going to be the most dangerous guy there from a, okay. a, a track local perspective. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. You got to run the race. Find yeah, out wasn't he running WRC for a minute? Probably. I don't know. Felix, 
um, Felix is, um, I- I've raced with him since 2014, one mm-hmm. way or another. And so, uh, he was going to school in the States and now he, he lives in the States again. And, um, great guy, very helpful. Um, I don't know if you, uh, might've seen, um, he used to be involved, uh, heavily <clears throat> in like the dash electronics stuff. And then more recently, he started to get involved in the McLan electronics stuff. Mm-hmm. And they, they seem to be doing some interesting stuff with Speedos right now. Well, um, McLan has been big. easy to drive. So. Well, yeah. So a little background of McLan. Them and Tim Smith and Colin Branch, they've been developing a lot of stuff for No Prep. Mm-hmm. So they've they developed like this programming for the ESEs for No Prep. So I'm assuming some of that's trickling over into... The yeah, on and offer it, yeah. Uh, so I kind of wanted to segue into this before we we talk about the NYGP, which is which is your 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 dragon this past weekend. Um, well, it I was wanted... in so many ways, but yes. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about that because I had many a people who say we need to get FD on the podcast, and <laughs> but I kind of wanted to touch on a few things because we've had some European races as well. We had uh, obviously we had the Worlds, which was in Gubbio, yeah, which was controversial. Uh, I kind of talked to you a little bit about that. You listened to our podcast that JQ done. Yeah, um, he tried to debunk did X Ray cheat or not? Yes, he did. And I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that as an on road guy, as a guy that this is your world. What did you think about his, so, his synopsis? <clears throat> I think you know he had he had an interesting look at it, and there's only there's only two possible outcomes realistically. Mm-hmm. One is. You know, somehow there is a uh, an Italian led conspiracy started from I don't know. I'll just guess, like you know, Francesco or somebody, right? Who put a different batch of tires that had the same imprint of like thirty two shore or whatever shore they were running, and you know they figured out that this batch is magical, and they found some way to land that batch with. Um, you know, a few of the guys in the x-ray team or they went to the track a lot. They did their homework. Uh, they did the work. They outworked everybody and that's it. So pick, pick, pick an outcome. What All did right? you think about um, JQ's analysis on his setup of Coelho's car? And yeah, they, it, being- it is interesting to think about like, you know, is one car looser than the other, faster mm-hmm. than the other? Um, you know, I, I, I was, um, not to name drop, um, mm-hmm. but I was, I was having dinner last night with Mark Reinhard. Oh, and, oh, oh, that's a name to drop though. And, uh, and <laughs> Max, Mach, Max Meschler, that's how it, it said correctly. Okay. And, uh, this other, their other friend, uh, Thomas Bermel, they all went to the NYGP Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were, we were talking about the event a bit and, um, you know, I, I think the, the thing that I probably caused the majority of the trouble, you know, other than the rain, constant rain, mm-hmm. the organizer, not knowing even any of the rules, you mm-hmm. know, just being a clown. All right. But the layout changes that were done in particular, yeah, that's set of dots on the sweeper where the car like wants to fall into the, the corner and then they have to steer out and drive around it. And it's so far away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think they made that just overly difficult. Um, now mind you, you could be like, well, it's the world. It should be hard. But <clears throat> I feel like that was also a contributing factor there. It just, um, you know, for some reason, maybe somebody had better vision. Um, maybe they just were able to find a muscle memory through there in a, in a way that would make it work. Um, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard to say, you know, what was the, that X factor? But, mm-hmm. you know, based upon everything we know, they put a ton of time in at the track and it's hard to beat effort. You know, yeah, I it, I agree kind of with that as well. And. I also heard like this people didn't enjoy the event for various reasons, like the the tables being too high, no chairs, stuff like that. Very 
I was con- the the entry count was kind of low. No Americans. Yep. So that was kind of my segue into that. Like, <clears throat> no Americans at this race. None of those top guys. Whereas I'm sure in years past there would have been plenty, like Barry Baker's days and all that. There would have been plenty yeah. of American guys there. <clears throat> Are the only professional on red racers in Europe now and in, in Asia? Uh, that are getting paid to that degree, mm-hmm. yeah, probably. You know, and I would say so. It the the funny part is like, you know, the question is like, what's the forward for some of the folks? You know, and mm-hmm. like, unless you're gonna try to create a brand like like Mark and the rest of his family have done, you know, it it feels hard to um, you know fund something just solely on racing, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I, we have um, this conversation a lot. And, you know, I like you, you see some of the other stuff and I don't know, you know, is this, is this making money in, in the reality, but like Mayfield has that J concept thing. All right. Mm-hmm. I, I hope, <laughs> I hope for the likeness of the brand of Mayfield, mm-hmm. he's getting something out of it. All right. He should. Yeah. I, I'm he assuming should. he does, but you know, yes. the, the reality is you need, I think separate, income streams to make that work and yeah you know like one of the last big u.s racers um was paul lemieux in on road mm-hmm. paul was very dominant for years okay and um you know he went into doing tires which are basically ride tires at least for like usgt and another touring car tire from another manufacturer let's just assume it's sweep and then, um, you know, he, he makes motors and uh, batteries and stuff like that. And, you know, he, he got smart and he got with some of the other people in the Midwest and they, they took upon the spec motor idea and they now have a spec motor both in USGT and Oval. So these other income streams, you know, I think are what, what allows people to kind of, you know, keep things moving. But, you know, it's not hard. It, I, I know it's a hustle for a lot of people. Oh yeah. And well, on roads it's way smaller than off well, off road small. Like people racing period, RC racing is yep. entirely small. I mean, we feel like it's big because we go to these races and it's, you know, eight, 700 people there, not racers, but 700 people with their and, families and yeah. all that stuff. It's a good bit of people there. I and mean, it feels big, but when you go to some event like high, like Jim Nall in the falls fly in and there's literally tens of thousands of people mm-hmm. there. And it's a week long event where it's going to see tens and tens of thousands of visitors. It's really small in the big scheme of thing. And then onward, because I've been having this discussion with my buddy and we've been having this discussion for a while. You look at races like Snowbirds, um, Scotty's race that used to have in Vegas. I don't you know. These are, yeah. Right. Um, I don't know how much the NYP GP pulled, but that's another, it's pulled some, you know, these, these private races are pulling more numbers than these worlds, these nationals. Yep. And so this is my pet peeve about this. Well, the the major reason I think why, and right. I was talking about this a bit with, with Max Meschler last night, mm-hmm. is the rules out of the regulatory bodies are just total shit. Okay. And, <laughs> you know, they don't know how to uphold them or they're just very onerous. Um they're not even rewritten correctly half the time. Um, but, you know, like if you're an F1 fan, you could see the F1 guys messed it up this weekend with rules too. Right. right? So rules are hard to do right. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I was talking with Max about at dinner last night was what if we don't do um, an organization or region by region rule but instead, we collectively as racers who actually know what the fuck they're talking about build a global rule. And then there's only some degrees of optionality. And so what, what I think would be very useful is if we could start grading event types. Mm. So if we had a single set of rules, you could break up some of the rules in such a way. So, like, I, I've seen this in the past. I don't know how big this is, really, but I'm trying to relate to what, what you guys do and your bread and butter. Mm-hmm. So, in eight scale in the past, there used to be, like, a wing size rule, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and things would go haywire, and it was only, like, maybe the Kyosho wing or something. Right, right. Did I get that right? 
Yes, that happened. Right, at I paid the, attention. Awesome. That happened at so, the If More Worlds in 2016. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in that sort of scenario, there's certain rules that only the most nitpicky thing would care anything about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if the same set of rules was everywhere, though, you could say, well, I'm going to go to like a level five event. And in level five, you do all five annoying things. Mm-hmm. And then first, like a normal club race. Oh, that's a level one event. So what do you do? You make sure you don't rip up the surface. You know, the ride height has to be good or something like that. And you're not cheating with voltage. Okay. You know, something like that. But if, if we could find a way to collectively have a set of rules and build a set of expectations for when I go to this event, what rules will be tested on me, then it's easy to prepare and go to different places. And, you know, the only variance would be like, hey, is there a certain sauce type rule? No sauce, a certain sauce, whatever sauce you want. Or is there a certain tire rule? Maybe, you know, any tire you want, only pin tire. Here's mm-hmm. the handout tire, whatever it might be. And I think those sorts of things would would probably help, you know, grow racing and, and make everything effectively the same. So it's not so weird when you go to different places and countries. So let me ask you something. In Onward, did they are they generally following the rules like our people? So that these races, so at NYPG, uh, NYPG, NYGP. Yep, you guys had the rules. whole name in it. It was the 2022 Montec, Montec New York Grand Prix, New York Grand Prix. Sorry, yeah. did you guys follow a set of rules for that? There was it stringent, or what was it? They like? were not overly stringent. Okay. okay, so it's more like a. Okay, so you were obviously in stock. You were testing for weight, voltage, I guess, as yeah, well. Yeah, so we did motor tech. So mm-hmm. we we took motors. We got them to a certain temperature. We mm-hmm. tested resistance, all right, against the specified measured charts that Roar has mm-hmm. um, because we know people in Roar, we were able to get that data, okay? Um, we checked for Blinky. And the interesting thing was there were – There's been new software released right around the time of the Roar um, Off-Road Nationals, I think, that talked about like new Hobbywing and new R1 software. Not everyone had that. Mm. Okay. And realistically, um, I was like making notes. This driver doesn't have it. This driver doesn't have it. We'd be like, update it, update it. (laughs) Some people would, some people wouldn't. Basically, if you took the TQ, we made sure you're, you know, on the up and up. Otherwise, you know, we would have the mach- the car come back and we go through it again. Okay. All right. Okay. And the the sort of the last two changes in the blinky space were more around um, fun things you could do with adding softening, and that would pull pull timing out of the motor at certain parts throughout the throttle control. So you can actually run more timing, go faster down the straightaway, but. Um, you know, initially in that acceleration band, mm-hmm. it has less, so you don't heat the motor up as much. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was a fun new way. Some people figure out how to cheat. Um, <laughs> you know, let's, let's be honest. That's it's playing all racing plays in this weird space. The, the gray area. Yeah. The and gray area. that's what makes guys great in like NASCAR and all this other stuff. All right. That's why crew chiefs get thrown out of races for multiple weekends. And, you know, the, the only thing that's annoying is when you're playing not in a gray area, but you're blatantly going against rules. Mm-hmm. I agree with you there. I agree with you there. So my question is, you guys seem to, so we always say, this is our feeling on the off road side. As you can see, I'm wearing a raw shirt that I, I got from Greg Dagani because he mm-hmm. was like, I'm not taking that back home. I was like, well, this is, I will wear it. And it fits very nice. Mm-hmm. 2022 uh, yeah. World Championship. We always feel like on the off-road side, because we get the bigger numbers, I think like our world sellout, our national, our fuel national sellout. Okay. Our e-buggy nationals, yeah, you know, doesn't get that much mm-hmm. people, 10 scale nationals. I think when it was just one, it got pretty decent, Yeah, but we always felt like raw in particular. And I would say if Martu is run by a bunch, is run by a bunch of you off on road guys. And we always wanted, well, it is kind of, but I think it it's is. run by it's run by a bunch of old men. 
Let's be right. serious. So we got the same issue. It's the old guard, right? Yeah. So they don't we race. need to get them out. Yes, they don't race. They use it as like a vacation it's where they get like to JK. fly somewhere and go eat dinner on someone else's paycheck. Okay, so it's so good to hear somebody besides Jake. You say this. It's the truth. <laughs> it's it's you know the blatant truth. And so in the conversation with with Max yesterday, he was mm-hmm. like, "Well, the worst part is we try to propose rules for for ten scale electric touring car, and then some guy who's like." A fifth scale guy says, "No, I don't agree with that." Fuck you, fifth scale guy. But it applies to shit scale. about it. Yeah, but that's in in how these organizations have been built up. They right. need, it's the old boys club, and they have right, to get right. all these goons to agree to do something, and that's why nothing gets done. It's done, and right. it's a fucking joke. Right, and I was telling my buddy who wants to run for raw president. I was like, are you talking about Clayton Young? No, not Clayton Young. But I'm supposed to have him on this podcast. I don't know him, but I'm sure you're going to tell me about him. I, I, I can give you his number. I, um, I've talked to him. His, I'll give it to everyone right now. It's six one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, I have another friend who's talking about it, and I was telling him and it takes more than one person. It's going to take a group of people, and it's going to have yes. to start with – um, because what's going to happen with one person getting in there, they're just going to be stifled because they're not going to have any word. I say there's some people in Raw that are young enough and want to do things, yep. but they get to a point, and then that, that old guard doesn't want to let that go. Yeah, so They don't want to let that go. There, like, is, there is some like people of change in Raw mm-hmm. right now. So the VP at the moment, his name is Garland. Um, right. Garland – Jeez. Yeah, he used to be the um, uh, Region 2 director. Okay. Um, and so he got promoted recently or elected recently. And, you know, I, I think what's happening is behind the scenes, there's honestly like a coalition of the willing. Good. Trying to work together. Now, when you drop that bomb about, hey, I got this buddy who wants to um, run, I was like, oh, shit. Because realistically... I think what we need, we almost need less options at the moment, mm-hmm. and we just need to stir the pot. And so, oh, yeah. you definitely need to do that. And you know, like the best thing we can do is get people who care to be the Roar Region directors. Right. That's and what so- I've been saying. That's what I've been saying. I've been saying that for like three years now. Mm-hmm. Sign up to Roar. Um, there's regional director positions that, according to their website, that isn't filled. I apply to get in there and as a group as yeah. a group consecutively as a group it doesn't matter what classes we're running but if we're a group of people that want to put progression of the mm-hmm. of the sport slash hobby first besides that and you know what I think that people should get paid for their time as well it shouldn't just go to one person like give yeah. split split things up because raw makes money off of uh What's the word like uh, license? Is it licensing the word I'm looking for? Like well, they, approval they of require the manufacturers to pay a hundred dollars, and then to do different things, it costs mm-hmm. different amounts of money. Right. So to do a body qual, it's twenty five bucks. Okay. But it doesn't matter. They'll measure it wrong. Um, <laughs> everyone else will measure it one way, and then it's wrong. All right. And yeah, you know, I'm, Roar knows I'm talking to them about it right now. Okay. Right. So my thing about this is like, I think, I don't think that these old guys are useless. I think that they should be, they still have knowledge. Like there's definitely knowledge and history that should be, that can be used. But I think there's nobody being like, I use the example, the guy Stitson, who was the referee at um, the worlds who I heard is very good. He's very strict. He's very good, but he's consistent in his, in He's, he doesn't care. Like he doesn't care if he pisses you off. Mm-hmm. I said to myself, this guy should be training other people. Yep. He's not old, by the way, but I'm saying he should be training people mm-hmm. not to be like him, but the basics of being. This is where I think this is where these federations can. Yeah, I, I, I heard that. Right. And, so this on the last where, podcast. Right. So they can. This is you know if you listen to the last podcast, like there's things that can be passed on and train people to do certain things with these, these older guys, but they don't want, nobody wants to change, man. And there is a, but you see, now that you talk about raw, I heard there's a collective, some other, I'm not going to say much, but I heard there's other tremors and other federations or things going around. Yep. So it's going to be interesting to see because 
I hate to pat myself or pat this podcast self on the back, but we have been one of the biggest thorns in these federations behinds for the last four years. Well, JQ, but yeah. mostly me, they're coming up with that. But I felt that it's necessary to keep their, because nobody's really holding their feet to the fire, to well, be honest, publicly. The, the, the problem is there's not accountability. Right. And they, they take too long to actually do anything. Okay. And then when they don't do something, there's no transparency as to why it wasn't done. Mm, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, th- exactly. What, what what they should do is make the roar meeting or whatever meeting. You could have Perfect. a nine box podcast. Yeah. And just like have no, no, you can't comment. And like just have people listen. Yeah, Exactly. And uh, you've gone on mute. But, yeah, it would be totally amazing. Yeah. And it would allow there to be transparency for once. And things would then be recorded. I agree because, with you. you know, like, I have a feeling there's a lot of different politicking and things like that. Like, the other thing I would say is there should not be anyone really affiliated with a manufacturer. I would agree there, too. I would agree there too. But I would agree there. You too. just look at it and they're painted with manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's all. and then that's where even more rumors start. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. So, but there that guy Clayton Young is going for raw president. Will he make a great yes. raw president? What's that? Will he do a will he is he is he, he one of the old guard or is he no, one is no. he, Okay, so he's, he's a guy who wants to push for change. Relatively new. He's okay. not young. All right. Okay. His last name might be right because I've seen pictures of him and I'm thinking old guard, old guard. Her. Well, he's just a Marine. Okay. Okay. So he served his country and now he's trying to serve his hobby. All right. And so that's the way I, I read it. And, um, you know, love him, hate him. He'll be transparent on things. And, um, you know, I, he, the the most the thing that bothered him the most was he got part of some micro thing within Roar, and he took it upon himself to rewrite the entire rule book. And I have a copy of the rule book as it was at the, his rule book as it was in 2020, and it's never been voted on to be promoted within the organization. You're on mute. Yeah, I was on mute because there was a Conda Cub 70 out there revving up really loud. <laughs> Interesting. So I, I have to get him on her then. Okay, I will yeah. make I will make it a, a – I've talked to him. Yeah. Clayton, I need to reconnect with him and get him on her. Clayton is um, – he's going to be at the Roar um, Asphalt Nationals this weekend. All right? He was just at the NYGP. Um, he isn't going to the race that's after that in Cleveland, Ohio, at, at a local track called The Gate. Mm-hmm. Um, this is known as the Halloween Classic, um, mm. which is a, another race that uh, I sponsor um, through a different brand called Roche. And, you know, you, you might find that, wow, there's this one guy who's spending a lot of time and a lot of money to, pr- like, promote racing, especially at local tracks. Mm. I wonder why. Because... If you don't have a local track, you can't race your fucking toy cars anywhere. And I know you don't like calling them toy cars, but you have nowhere to race them. No, right? no. And no. it's madness. So, um, there, you know, you need sometimes you need these big events that are in ballrooms and whatever else. But mm-hmm. what you really need is it's club racing, club racing, butts and seats and helping those places keep the doors open. Well, I mean. How do we grow on road racing? Do we go back to old school touring car and parking lot stuff? Well, I everything goes through like these little ebbs and flows. Mm-hmm. And the funny part is like there are some classes that you think could be cool, mm-hmm. but there's things about them that make them cost prohibitive. Mm-hmm. All right. At the moment, honestly, probably the best class would be um well there's probably two best classes or basically there's two types of cars if you just buy these two cars Mm -hmm. you could race all year okay okay so the first one is you just have to have a four-wheel drive touring car all right um this so this past weekend i raced 
a carbon fiber car. I did not race an alloy chassis car. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did this somewhat on purpose um, because the team, I'm going to say collectively struggled at a low grip race, which is snowbirds. And I didn't bring a touring car and I was kicking myself for not bringing a touring car because I couldn't help. And so we, um, we went to carpet Nats, which was at Chris's Chris Adams track. Someone who's also going to this Roar national event. He hosted the carpet version of it and, um, you know, grip was good, you know, whatever. And then we went to another race in Denver to close out the sort of indoor season. And that is historically a very low, low grip track. Mm -hmm. And so I brought, I built a new carbon car and I brought it to that event. And, you know, we were on some new tires that are very hard and I was able to get my car to traction roll. And when you're traction rolling, that's when you're usually pretty fast. And so I didn't win. I didn't think I was going to win. I thought, you know, if I, if I had the same car as the best driver at the event, which I do own the same car, the best driver at the event. I still probably won't win. And that, mm-hmm. that's okay. All right. Um, I'm more sort of interested in what do you learn? And then how do you improve things? And, you know, I always want to put in a good drive. I want to, um, you know, be proud of what you do. But, you know, I, I have realistic expectations. Some classes, you know, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at. Other mm-hmm. classes, I'm like, eh, I'm all right. And other ones, I just kind of do it because it puts a giant smile on my face. No, I mean, that's at the end of the day, you want to be smiling. Yeah. You want to be and, smiling. But so like, I think, you know, in on-road, you need, a, you need a touring car, four-wheel drive. And then you should probably get a 12th scale. The problem, though, with certain 12th scale classes is tires. And so mm. there, there is a tire combo on carpet that just makes a lot of sense for beginners. And it's um, these SJT rubber 12th scale tires. You can buy one set, you can race one set, you can race them for like 10 weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. And they cost like $35 or something like that. That's great. I highly recommend that. Even even with respect to some of the um, nonsense that's been going on on social media in the last uh, 24 hours. Right. We're going to touch on that. Uh, I just wanted to say that I see Onward, which it it just goes hand in hand with carpet offer it because you can do both. In the same area, I think. So, like, I have a buddy up in Ohio, I believe. Is he? No, it's in Ohio. One of those areas there. Close to Chicago, I would say. I don't know how okay. close that is. Um, he did have a, on, like, off-road, on-road track. And is it the Thunderdome? A, no, it's, like, I sponsored it. Uh, my buddy, Tony Scarcella. But it's mostly off-road. They do a lot of off-road. <clears throat> but it's just, I see this. And and 10 scale requires, sorry, 12 scale requires less space. So I see, you know, it's going to have to go indoors and probably in school gyms and stuff, similar how they do it in the UK and stuff like that. So we shall see. We shall see. It's going to be hard to do asphalt tracks, you know, and have those. those I mean, they can be done, but I think at some point going back maybe to the roots, parking lot racing. Yeah, Yeah. parking lot racing and and enjoying that. Where that's I where ran, that that's where it grew. That's where it blew yeah. up. I ran a, a parking lot race this year. It was a, a TCS race, mm-hmm. and um, you know it's always kind of interesting to do that. It wasn't really a parking lot like in a Home Depot or anything right. like that. It was a parking lot in a school, like in the corner that no one saw. But you know there there is something to be said about bringing it to the people. Yes, and the the only challenge is you need to bring it to the people and then not be like embarrassed to tell them how much it costs. Right. Well, not brag about it. Like not yeah. use it as a bragging point, like be realistic. Mm-hmm. Tell them they can get into it second hand too. Cause yeah. you can, I don't know about owner it. Offer it. You no, can. second hand, you know, is real. And honestly, second hand is probably the best thing to do uh, unless you end up buying someone's problems. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. Can happen, you know, in any That's class. That's true. All right, so drama. So Onward has a a fair bunch. Of, I thought Offward had a lot of drama, but you guys actually have a lot more than us. It seems like I, we. Eh. I don't know if there's a lot of drama out there. Well, I, I haven't. I haven't anywhere in Offward like 
we don't have okay. So yeah. let's be honest. And offered the biggest thing we came to cheat in was like people accusing Ongaro of using a gyro uh-huh. for years, which is it's which is accusing of cheating. But otherwise than that, I'm not you know, if somebody's over on a fuel tank, it's not cheating. The fuel the fuel tank probably blew up because yeah. it got too hot. Something well, like that. I would say the, the biggest thing that you know, like if I were to say there's one big thing people cheat with, it's usually motors. Like, you know, random motor you can't okay, and, buy and or make or whatever. You mean an, an electric. So we're talking yeah. electric. I was comparing to eight scale nitro. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but there is a lot of drama. You was involved in some this weekend. Unfortunately, which, yes. Yes. But uh, before we get into that, tell us a little bit about the 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 2022 Montac New York Grand Prix. It's history a little bit where sure. it's held because I think yeah. I saw some really cool racing from this. Uh, was it last year or a couple of years ago? Some close racing. So before we get into it, so people know what we're talking about, this is a, a well-known race on up in North, New York, up in the Northeast. Mm-hmm. You had Reinhardt there. You had a couple, like you said, a couple of big European guys there. Yeah. I think, I want to say, like, has Hagberg been to this? He's, Hagberg's been there before. Right. You know, we've, had, we've had a bunch of basically world champions or national champions or big race, you know, guys run at this place throughout the years. Um, Where is it? How to? Yeah. The track is in um, Westchester, New York. It's actually a town called New Rochelle. And so it's just about 10 minutes across the New York city um, border. And so you head basically towards Connecticut um, right along the coast there on the 95. Oh, so it's a permanent track then. Yeah, it's a permanent track, okay. and it's um, in a facility that is run by uh, a good friend, uh, Donnie Leah. Um, I've known Donnie since we were little kids, and uh, we were like 12 or 13 racing off-road buggies, all right? And so Donnie, um, a long time ago, um, Donnie opened a track in, uh, in Long Island, New York, where we both grew up, and uh, that was in 2008. And uh, he opened it. It was the first 360. It had to close for whatever reason. A few years later, he reopened 360 V2. And this one happened to be in New Rochelle. And it is basically catty corner to um, a car dealership that Donnie is a part of. Okay. And um, the building is mostly used for um, the parking lot is mostly used for car storage when you have cars that you can sell. Okay. Okay. Uh, but there happens to be a big ass building and, uh, you know, it, it's been the home of, uh, New York city carpet racing for, you know, at least, I don't know, the last six, seven, eight years, something like that. And, um, you know, things come and go like, you know, we get different waves of popularity and lack of popularity. You know, we've done a lot of things at that facility. Um, and you know, the even some of the people who are involved in the drama this weekend helped that facility tremendously. Mm-hmm. Uh, a bunch of years ago, that facility got closed down by the fire marshal because there mm. wasn't working sprinklers. Sprinklers got repaired and water got restored because of Albin Melendez. Right. He made that happen, made the facility work. And so, um, you know, he's a good friend of Donnie's and, you know, usually of mine. And, you know, the reality is people sometimes get heated. And, but it is racing. Uh, yeah, well, kind of. And there's often, like, the biggest problem is you could take something and sweep it under the rug. Mm-hmm. And so when we, when we found an issue this past weekend, it was in between Q3 and Q4, people had been talking about and went up to the race announcer saying there's people saucing in the pits. And so what do we mean by that? Well, to folks who don't know, um, the tire out of the view use can have a huge impact on how fast your machine goes. On mm-hmm. the trip. All right. And so not only do we require a non um, smelling additive, we require a specific additive. And so big thanks to Jeff Brown, who, once again, stepped up and sponsored this year's event and provided uh, a sauce table. So he provided all the sauce 
and we had a table set up with stands and it would be right after the tech inspection line. If you had to go use sauce, you got to get your ass out of your chair, walk over there and use it on that table. And then you can go back and bring your car back, sit down, do whatever you want. So um, earlier in the week, like during round round one and two, we went around and folks who had sauce, we had them get it off the table. We're like, okay. you're not allowed to use it. All right. The bigger challenge was the racers around in this one section were smelling something. Uh, something that <clears throat> smells like a different additive. Mm. And so, um, you know, there, there was basically the back table in the building uh, on one side was found to have this bottle of additive at it. And we knew who it was. Uh, we uh, took the, you know, took the bottle, opened it, smelled it. This doesn't smell right. Seal it back up, hand it to the two or three other people helping work the event. And um, because of various reasons, uh, not only uh, am I the sponsor of the event, but I actually help tremendously in the work effort for the event. Okay. Uh, because Donnie wasn't able to this year. And so um, ultimately we helped make, have him be involved to make a call. This is what happened, you know, and, but we, we purposely didn't say who it was. Okay. Because we don't want relationships to get involved with rules and what's right, what is right and what's wrong. So this was not publicly known outside of the Facebook no. post that we saw the other day. Okay. No. Yesterday. And so people saw us walking around. They saw us pick up something. Mm -hmm. Many people came over. They recommended what we should do. They're like, yep, you should DQ all those runs, put them in the last sort, and he can start last or the first sort and start last, like, you know, the lowest sort and start last for the final round. And this is, you know, what's been done at different races like this when that's been found out. Okay. So there's precedent. And so um, the, you know, the, the interesting point is, uh, you know, what happened next? So there's a conversation. So me and Alvin go outside. I ask him, hey, can you go outside? And realistically, I don't want to have this conversation with anyone. Right. I get that. But the person I don't want to have the conversation with is someone you know, someone who's a local, mm -hmm. someone who's friendly with the owner of the track, someone who helped the track it's it's awkward it's not awkward it's i was mad to even have to have the conversation in that position to be put in that position because i don't want to be doing it but mm -hmm. you have to do it and that's the real problem and you're just like disappointed in the person Okay. So the fun part is the conversation, you know, and a billion people have asked me about this already. And, uh, you know, some people posted about it on the, on the internet. Hell I'm doing a podcast on it. So. Well, well we didn't have people yeah. ask about it. So I thought it'd be great to yeah. talk about it. So, uh, so the conversation led in, Hey, we found a bottle of sauce. Oh yeah. We, we've been using that. And I'm just like, what do you mean? We, well, the entire team's been using it to sauce their tires. I'm like, what do you mean the entire team? And I, you know, so let people dig a hole. Right. Right. So he does, he put the whole team in the hole just now. Correct. And on that table is actually three people who I didn't think took part in this. We had a, a racer out of Japan. His name's Kazuki. We had a racer out of great Britain, Ollie Payne, who you've probably heard of. Mm -hmm. And another racer out of uh, Great Britain, uh, Morgan Williams. And I don't think they will use that sauce. And I can tell you that a person on that table helped identify the use of this sauce. Wow. Okay. So, just so I clear this up, the use of the sauce there was so you can control... Basically, not just so you can know that everybody's on the same sauce. 
Correct. Right. Okay. Just to know that. And the reason you have this pick this tartan type of sauce is one, he sponsored it to it's not as stinky as the other sauces that it's, you use. It's the prevalent um, uh, product being used for the last decade. Okay. So it is a prevalent product that's being used yes. at this track. Okay. And, gotcha. and the important part was the bottle I picked up was that product. The label is that product. But what was in it wasn't the same? It's not the same. Okay. And you, you know. The, but he the should have been doing it on the sauce table from the get-go. Correct. So that's fresh rule broken right there, right off the bat. Yeah, yep. guilty of that right off the bat. Yep. And then, so that's first problem. Second problem is the stuff in the bottle isn't the stuff that everyone's right. using. Okay. And then the funny part is like, yeah, you know, oh, everyone's doing it. And then I open up the bomb of, well, just so you know, that sauce is not what everyone's using. And you, he's like shocked and awed. What do you mean it's not what everyone's using? I'm like, dude, it has an odor. I don't know what's in it. Don't care what's in it. But, you know, reality is you're disqualified and you've just narked out your entire team. <laughs> and do you want to name names or are you just going to maybe, you know, be quiet about it and say, you know, take take your punishment. Hmm. So and that's like, I guess that's when they got aggressive. No, not at all. Oh, not at all. And so reality is I, you know, I think there was like smoke coming out of the ears at the moment. And, you know, you start thinking like, Hey, what excuse can I make next? And so it's like, well, you know, the, the team just got tired of getting up and, and saucing their tires. I'm like, don't care. Yeah, but everyone has to do that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So did this result in you and him getting in like a shouting match or whatever? So at that moment, it was mostly me yelling at him because okay. of the disappointment. Right. And like the fact that why am I telling this guy who's a local, who is a manufacturer representative, who is a friend of the track owner. Right. That this is what happened. But how did it? I mean, so uh, let, okay, let's fast yeah. forward. I'll, I'll share yeah. the, the next few steps. Okay. So we go back over to the computer race director deletes the races, go back over, hand them a note. You know, we're not grandstanding. We're not celebrating this. You know, we're not being dicks. All right. right. Walk over. Here's a note. This is the, the race you're in the car number you have, you know, good luck. And so round the round starts. First, he's in first race, last car, races his race. Um, apparently, I didn't watch the race, didn't care about the race, frankly, whatever. Um, doesn't make the you know A main, but he made himself up from the C main to the B main. So right. he actually had a chance to do bump ups because we did. B main bump ups, only taking nine cars into the A and allowing the winner of the B to bump. Okay. okay. So all hope isn't lost. You could always, you know, double down, do something, you know, tomorrow. But he comes off the stand, doesn't marshal, and then runs over. I'm sitting in my pits doing shit because, you know, I'm trying to race, but half of the weekend I've spent like selling tires and helping organize and do all this other bullshit for the event. And um, just gets in my face, you know, don't ever talk to me like that. Don't ever raise your voice at me. So this is after this, after his race. Correct. The next day. No, the same day. Okay. 30, 40 minutes later. Okay. But after he didn't make the main. Yeah. Okay, so he didn't make the main, so he's upset. Now, was he was he was he in the main with his qualifying? Don't know. I think he okay. might have been eleven before. Okay, but I don't know. It's so he got a, a kind of delayed I, delayed response there. Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. And so we were out in the parking lot. He was calm, basically calm as could be. He was trying to argue a case, but. Um, Based upon the later response, he could have just laid me out there. Was it aggro? Was it super aggro? Oh, yeah, dude. It was ugly. So and this is in the pits? In the pits. 
<clears throat> not good. And not good the, both ways. The reality is um, me 10 years ago wouldn't sit there and talk calmly. Okay. And so, you know, we the funny older. things are all the things you hear after it. All right. You know, so much of a ruckus was occurring. The B sort was running. The guys were getting distracted. Like if you watch the B sort dry, like race, marshals are walking away from their marshal positions, starting to walk towards the pits to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. All right. So the race director, you know, eventually is like, you know, shut up, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the threats, the accusations, the this, that, whatever else, you know, and he, he's like, don't raise your voice to me. So I don't talk low. So I'm like, this is the lowest voice I can talk to you in. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, no one wants to hear whatever you're going to say back to him, you know, threatens to kick my ass, this, that, whatever else. And, you know, it's kind of not the thing you really need. And no, not at, not, not at RC events. No. And, no. you know, it, to me, um, it's, it's embarrassing. And the funny part is, uh, you should see all the emails I've gotten since, um, people like, like, I don't want to be a part of that. Right. You know, and uh, then the, it hurts. The the, it, hurts the, it, it really hurts the hobby the sport. Well, like, it hurts the brands they represent. The that most. too. Yes. And then the other funny part is like somebody passed me a note and it said, FJ, I got your back, son. And <laughs> I took a picture of it because it was fucking hilarious. All right. And then everyone else is like, yeah, if he got on you, it wouldn't have lasted for long. Uh, I mean, we, I'm glad it doesn't get to that. We don't need any any violence at any more races. But I understand why he was disappointed. <clears throat> this is a guy. It's frustrating. Yeah, it, it's frustrating. To to me, you know, the only thing I can come up with is when drama happens <clears throat> later. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's the peak of aggravation. I've failed. I use right. that word a lot. I I didn't make the A main. Yep. It's all your fault. So yep. I got to No, I didn't like probably when he was getting ready for it, he probably didn't really realize it. It's like, oh, I'll bump up to the A anyway. Didn't they'll make the A. Then it's your fault. Then that's mm-hmm. when it's uh, I I could understand his passion, his his um emotions yep. as well. So you are the focal point because you disqualified yep. him from that. So you become that. But in the end of the day, if he does, I think if they, or everybody just sits down and realize at the end of the day, you're breaking two rules that everybody else is abiding by. And this is not, this is just something that once, I don't know if, if this was offered, I would definitely blame raw because of the lack of rules that we have at races or, or federation representation. Just like, uh, uh, but you guys have it, and he's a seasoned racer, and he should know better. I would assume he's done this race before. Yep. I assume you guys have had sauce tables before. Yep. Uh, maybe he's done this before and just like never, never noticed. Maybe you, I don't know. Maybe because you're know. more diligent. You know, I don't know. but maybe like he was, the reality it, is, the the racers around you saw it. They, right. you know, they're like. Of course, Most I'm going to say something. Don't name names, but I'm going to be like, "Why does that guy get to sauce on his table and stuff. I don't?" I'm going to say things. I'm going to say, "Why does that guy get to sauce and I don't?" Mm-hmm. On my table, I I don't know how we sold it. Like, so then my buddy, so my buddy, the, actually, who first brought this to my attention was my buddy Joe Zaire ran out of talent podcast, and he he's like, "You need to get hefty on her to discuss this." And he's all into BJJ, who you a uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu. He's like, "We have a we have a INS race coming up here." And there's no sauce, or some race has got in Minnesota. Yeah. And if I catch somebody sauce, and it's gonna be a fight. I was like, whoa, it's so passionate. So it's on. And then, and then I, I kind of read what the guy Mendez wrote. I, I, I understand his emotions too. But at the end of the day, you broke two, two blatant rules, and you earn friends, you earn people around you. Said some. So what I'm thinking, I, I know nothing about this situation, but what probably he's probably just done this before, and nobody said nothing. And the owner of the track is probably allowed it. He's probably done it before. He probably, yeah, I'm a, I done. 
but you were diligent. So that's what happens when somebody who does sticks by the rules versus somebody who don't. And it kind of puts you, it just puts you in a hard position and ruins your, like ruins your race weekend. Yep. Totally. His race weekend too, but he did it to himself. Yep. You know, so he shouldn't even be mad. So I read this report. He said something about it's the same stuff and okay. So even if it's the same stuff, it shouldn't be on your table. Yep. You're no bigger than you're no different from the other people. Mm-hmm. Who, who are her? Yeah, and you know the the argument he'll make is that other people have sauce and this that whatever else, and yeah, you know, in certain times of the day, people were using sauce during practice, you know, like the beginning and the afternoons, uh, before and after racing, and you know, the reality was after this occurred, okay, if I saw someone with sauce, I opened the bottle, I sniffed it, and I put the lid back on, and people looked at me like you're really checking. I'm cheating. I said, I'm just looking, man. All right. You know, because the, the unfortunate part is, you know, I wouldn't want to have somebody else do it and try to, but the whole point of the sauce table is to avoid all of that. So you don't yeah, even yeah. need to have a, a bottle of sauce on your table whatsoever. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so why have it even yeah. though you don't need it. You just use what's there. Ah, so wait, wait, emotion. These, I, I have seen these, these tiny cars bring out the greatest emotions in people, man. Yeah. And, you know, like I, I have to say, though, I'm pretty proud of myself for like just being cool, like and calm Oh, or saying something about it and not being a pussy and not saying anything about it at all. So sorry, well, it wasn't me who, who reported. It was other people, right, the right, racers. Right. And, you know, like I, I got put in the position where I'm now running the event for Donnie and. I could go like, just be like, yeah, no, he's not doing it. It's all right. It doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. And that's bullshit. A shame. A shame. Because this is, you had top international guys there. Reinhard yeah. won, I believe. Yeah. 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 You, had, you had guys won. from Japan there. Yeah. 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 The, the guy from Japan is two people away from him. And he sees all this go down. Yeah. You had like the same amount of Japanese representation at this race as the IFMA 2022 IFMA World Championships in Spain. Yeah, or half of it, but yeah, yeah it's crazy. <laughs> no, right? it was any you can either. Um, interesting stuff, man. Unfortunate. I thought it was a lot more dramatic. I haven't really, you just told me, you wrote me and told me what was going on, mm-hmm. but I I don't know, man. I, I think that this just, he got DQ'd, wasn't too fussed about it because he thought he would make the A and and didn't make the A like emotions. I think mm-hmm. if he looks back when he calms down, he'll even realize, all right, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I shouldn't have shot it. Maybe your emotions got a little bit too high with your disappointment at Dude, him I, catching I him doing it. I this guy. I, no yeah. joke. You know? Like, if there was somebody new that had never done this race before, we could understand it. Yeah. But, but exactly. Uh, if, it, if it was some, like, rookie, mm-hmm. if it was someone, you know, like, maybe they didn't understand English. Like, we had a, a table of guys who came over from Colombia. For this race really yeah Dude. is it that much of an international crowd i guess it's new york it's easy to get there too yeah and they have fun they go to new york you know whatever uh-huh. dude it's it's like a destination so like you know the germans that showed up they've been in the city for like the uh, last two days okay. and they have one more day and they're just here hanging out doing new york shit because it's fun that, i didn't realize it got so many people there so many people there um well Next year, what did, what's the date for it next year? Well, it usually always is, is the weekend before Columbus Day weekend. Okay. Or, you know, basically like Columbus Day was too, the Monday and it finishes on the Sunday before the Columbus Day. You know, I, that's when it's historically happened. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the best time because, you know, realistically, the the track hasn't really gotten any real momentum going for the in, for the indoor season yet. And, you know, this year... Uh, in my opinion, like the in the local turnout was really low. Okay, and so all the locals who were there, I thank them for coming. You know, and Good like stuff. they, you know, for the folks who showed up, it was great. And you know, I think they, I think everyone had fun for the most part. And um, you know, clearly there's one or two people, and you know, fifteen others that were not there and on the internet who are pissed off about it. But um, I'm sure I'm going to get some messages after this. You're going to get hate mail like crazy, bro. Enjoy. Sorry. Um, can we switch over a little bit? Uh, let's turn. Let's make it positive. Yeah, let's go. No. Uh, well, 
No, I mean, you're just telling me what happened. I wanted to know what yeah. happened, and a lot of people wanted to know what happened. And I'm sure this guy has his version as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at the end of the day, you you were saucing at the table. If, when you have a sauce table and that's against the rules just like you know much as you can complain that that tank is one cc over half a cc over mm-hmm. it's against the fucking rules and you're yeah. over so um yeah i got it uh off road let's yeah. switch gears real quick before we wrap this up because i said this is going to be an hour uh i know he's going to talk about ets as well because i know so, ets i know you like that i thought let, okay, let's touch on that real quick. Okay. Badass track, corkscrew, yes. loved it. Um, uh-huh. one of the few on rare tracks I've seen with like elevation. I yeah. love this. Totally amazing. Um, I think we need if if we're I would love to see. I don't know how we could do it, but I would love to see more elevation in on road. Yeah. Um, beautiful facility. Scotty was there. Man, Scotty is tra- he was there, and he went and did the raw nat. No, he did yeah. raw nats. Then he went and did that. Mm-hmm. Now he's at. He must have stayed in Europe, and he did EOS. Yeah. Then he comes over and he's doing masters of dirt at uh, Beach RC. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. So he's yeah. back in full swing. Yeah, uh, it's great. good. You know, like people yeah. people are getting out there. They're living in their lives, which is exactly great. that's what it's, we it's, want to have happen. Exactly, and things are getting back to normal. That that ETS track where um uh the gentleman who um TQ'd and won the event. And he won everything but, I think, one round of qualifying. Um, he's he's out of France. Uh, his name is Lucas Urbain. Mm-hmm. And um, really nice guy. Um, he, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how much people really care about, you know, him. But, like, he has an average job. He works, I, I think, as, like, as a part of the French rail system. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, on the trains. And, uh, you know, he's not a pro driver. He and he won stock or no, he won mod touring. So Reinhardt didn't race this race. He did. He whooped Reinhardt's ass. Hold on. So let's rewind. So where was this track? It wasn't France. No, it wasn't France. Okay. It's, um, I don't know. I want to say it's like somewhere fancy. Like uh, it's, it's some country. So this wasn't like his right local around. track. Yeah. This but, guy wasn't a guy's local track. Just, just a guy. It's who, relatively his local track. Okay, okay. So he I'm has sure. a lot of laps at this okay. track. All right, okay. and so he laid it down. Um, but you know, no one there, unlike the worlds where you know Bruno had a, a six second lead on people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he 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 won by like a half second, second, second and a half. You know, something like that. Mm-hmm. And so it seemed more agreeable to most people. All right. Whatever that means. And um, but it, it was great to see, like, you know, Lucas's effort and his, you know, his real mm-hmm. understanding of that that surface and the, you know, the lines and the setup or whatever, you know, and it paid off for him. So it was nice to see, you know, someone who doesn't necessarily sweep up all the wins to get a win and in a pretty commanding way. It wasn't he lucked into anything. He deserved that. OK. Let me ask you something. Do you think we'll ever see X-Ray return to this series? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. No, but... Unfortunate. Yeah, and, you know, I think it's really, you know, it might be billed as as a breakdown between, um, you know, it's an X-Ray versus an Awesomax thing. I don't think that's it. I, I think it's more of a an X-Ray versus the Reinhardt thing. Mm-hmm. I think that's how it's really seen. Um, but... And again, you know, like not having everyone competing in the same spot at the highest level, it hurts people, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it hurts, it hurts the, the hobby in a way, but oh, I agree. you know, I the, agree. the other way to also look at it is at some of the events and, you know, again, I'm not at these events. All right. Uh, but you know, this is what I'm hearing. All right. The guys who are at the back of the A main now because there's less drivers, you know, the X-ray isn't bringing their team per se. Um, although Jan ran modified and did very good. Um, Jan Ratajski, excuse me, ran mod touring, which he normally doesn't run, mm-hmm. did very well. And, but the, the guys at the back of the main, just in the A are less competitive mm. and, you know, in modified, unfortunately, the guys at the back of the A are also often a liability. 
and, you know, they can get in the way that, mm-hmm. you know, they don't know the right way to pass, you know, and whatever it is. So th- there's only so many people at that level in modified, uh, you know, mod touring and, and, you know, depending upon who you are, you're going to say one of two things. And I, I asked Mark about this explicitly last night. Is it too fast? He's like, nah, not too fast, but he's fucking good. Mm. All right. Conversely, it's super hard for someone who's running a, a blinky 13.5 motor to step up to that class. Mm-hmm. And so I saw rules recently posted um, in uh, BRCA. I think that's what the British one's called. Mm-hmm. They are thinking about doing a blinky five turn and specking on, I think, a hobby wing five turn motor for touring car in 2023 for mod touring for car. mod. Okay. I think this for is everybody. A, yeah. I think okay. this is a huge mistake because then it's going to be, then we're going to get the same issue we have with stock, like cheating motors and stuff like that. Well, yeah. So, but it's a few fold. Here's, here's really the issue. If they spec one motor, the hobby wing, cause everyone has it. Mm-hmm. Then there's no reason for hobby wing to sponsor any of those racers. Mm. Or for all the other manufacturers to sponsor any of those racers. Because not going to use the equipment. Yep. And, yeah, so if you're not running the equipment, and then what it makes it into is a stock class where the motor, okay, they've spec the motor, and now the battery become the most important thing in the car. And you'll be putting new batteries in every week or maybe even every run. <laughs> And no one's going to pick up your, you know, no one's going to help with your travel. No one's going to help with your expenses. And, you know, those guys who are trying to compete at that level, I think are, are going to suffer. Uh, you know, so we tried that in the past in, in the States. We tried to do um, a 6.5 blinky 12 scale mod class and it almost worked. And it's gone through a few iterations, but like, uh, there was this was run a few years ago at, at Scotty's IIC race, and um, basically it ended up becoming a spec motor race. And the king of spec motors is Andrew Knapp, and uh, with this Trinity horsepower, and Andrew whooped everyone's ass in mod twelve scale. This past weekend, NYGP, Andrew was maybe four laps off the pace. Mm an open mod. Wow. I only ran my open mod car twice because I didn't have a lot of time. I was one or two laps off at Andrew's pace, maybe three. And, you know, the, it's, it's about putting like a run in, but like we are hot laps for basically the same speed. And so, um, you know, the reality is, uh, you know, certain cars do well in spec. Certain people do well in spec. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the same and it's the same in all for it. Yeah. And my fear is just the rules that people might be choosing to do something. They're just repeating the same patterns that we've already. Yeah. You just made another, you just made another stock class in my opinion. Just let mod be mod. Well, that's what it's. So you you think the same way Mark does. I think other people like my opinion would be, well, maybe what you do is you allow open ESCs. So you can compete within the ESC space. You can make better software and then you, you make a, a wind restriction and you know, you can have inductance tests and all this other crap. But when, when you, cause if I, I go back to the time before Blinky had to show up, we used to run in stock, you know, pretty much the problem was initially LRP had a great stock um, ESC and then the advanced electronics thing came out and blew everyone's mind. Um, we can go into, we, sh- we could talk about how we've killed stock classes um, in another episode. That's a whole <laughs> yeah. long run. It's, it's going to be terrible. But, you know, the, the reality is I'm afraid um, if you don't do something, mod touring the way it is, is dead. It's no entries. I was, I looked at uh, my buddy went to a race up in Virginia. I want to say local, like big race. It was like five torn car, mod torn car entries. Yeah. I'd be surprised. And this is a big race. 
Yeah, yeah. And the the problem, like the thing I always try to like put on people and whether they like to hear it or not, whatever the slower classes that you have, you know, there's a TQ guy in super stock, let's say. The question is, did you beat that guy's TQ? If not, maybe you shouldn't run the class. All right. So there's that angle. But then, you know, once you've gotten fast enough and you can beat that guy's TQ with the faster motor and the whatever else, you know, then then the real question is, you know, how do you how do you continue to go faster? And, you know, you most people aren't putting the time in, you know, instant gratification society. You hit the reset button on your PlayStation, you know, yeah, that, well, that's an issue in offer it too. That's an issue. Uh, switching gears to offer real quick before we wrap this up. Worlds have been announced. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, Hobby Action has gotten it in Arizona. Yeah. And so they have, is that a, is that a clay track? It is a clay track. Yeah. So everybody's like, oh, Ryan Mayfield's going to win. Excuse me. I think, the, I think the town there is, they're in is Chandler, Arizona. Yes. yes. It's near, um, like it's a Phoenix suburb. I think it's on the west side of Phoenix. Right. So my thoughts on this is I thought that um, the, where they have the Florida Copper Championship was going to get yep. it, but they didn't. Those guys are getting the 12 skill worlds instead. Oh, really? So they do on road at that? Well, yeah, because it's all modular. They, they don't really. Right. But they will for that event. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> they're going to have it there. Everybody's like, oh, Mayfield's going to win another Worlds. I think Fenn's going to win another, win his first Worlds there. I think it's going to be one of the last... I mean, Max and I have, was talking about this on the Patreon only pod. I think it's probably going to be one of the last Worlds you see on Dirt. Maybe. I, I can think. tell you, I'll probably save the vacation day and not go. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. Um, it's gonna, I think I'll get excited for the Worlds next year. And yeah. it starts to come in Iran. Uh, it's gonna. I think you're gonna see all the international guys come. Who doesn't want to get excited? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it travel wise, I mean, people can fly into LAX pretty easy. It's a four hour drive. Four Phoenix hour drive is a real airport, Arizona. though. Like they have international flights going. Yeah, yeah, but I think like flying into Phoenix is expensive. I know. I mean, just looking depends. Depends. Yeah. Um, but I know a lot of people just fly into LA because it's just easier. So I think we'll get a well. I think we'll get a. I think we'll get a full world. I think a lot of people will travel. Yeah, it's going to be in America. It's going to be relatively cheap, and uh, it should be good for ten scale. And it'd be good to see. I don't think Mayfield's an automatic, or because it's like Mayfield and yeah. Rifkins. I I still think Fend right now is the best overall ten scale offer a driver out there. I'm dark, you know, I, I don't know. We can we can put side bets on maybe. Um, does House of RC have like a betting app? No. Can we make one before now and then? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure Connie would he would know how to do it. He's smart like that. But it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, I don't. You don't watch any of the EOS this weekend, did you? You was busy uh, with your race. Yeah, so. dude. We were there at at like <clears throat> seven a.m. and we left at midnight every day. So no. Yeah, sounds like RC. Sounds like RC. <laughs> All right. Um, like I said, I wasn't even really planning this podcast. And then you're yeah. like, oh, we should record about it. So I said, sure. We had some people ask about. Because, have you, you know, seen, um, have you seen, you're talking about off-road, but have you seen Maddie G running some on-road recently? I did see that. I did see that with one up um, yeah. at Steel City. He might have did Steel City. <clears throat> uh, and he's been running, I think, at like Cal Raceway. And there's uh, a place in like, I think, Santee, which is like uh, near San Diego. And, um, but yeah, it looks like he's running a little on road, which is interesting. Good. I think he should. <clears throat> I think he should. That's a class that, that needs top American yeah. talent at this point. So he can, he can probably make, not saying that he, you know, yes, you didn't make the, uh, you didn't make the finals at the Lucian J concepts race, born a crime at Hughes or Blacks, which was a, which was a really nice dark track, by the way, I have to say one of the best dark tracks I've seen in a long time. Uh, he didn't make that main, but yeah, I think I think Born of Crime should drive everything, including Nitro. So um, I do. I do also hear, and like I, I might get this wrong, so I'm going to read a chat message system here. So please try to uh, avoid my lack of attention for a second. But I heard Roar actually was missing um, national bids for three different surfaces. Um, they don't have an asphalt 
electric asphalt national bid for 23. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great if someone in California would step up. Well, no, <laughs> that ain't Steel City because they're going to be gone. Well, uh, we know that, but there's other, there's many other okay. asphalt tracks in California. Um, there's also, I don't know if it's both nitro types, but there's no nitro on-road nitro national bid. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, which will blow your mind, there's no 10th scale dirt national bid. Because nobody wants to do it. I didn't even know. Hold on. Where do where do Royal Nationals next year? For well, they're, they're working on it now. Okay, but so there's I don't no know. bids for those three surface types. Well, I think I think that's what happened to them last year. Coming out of um, 2021, no for 2022 worlds. That's why. Sorry, the the Nationals were in March in Arizona because they decided it was too hot during mm -hmm. June to do it. Yeah. But I think they did it. And that track had never, hadn't been finished. Tim Lyon finished it. Yeah, never it held great. a race. I do know a guy that is that did bid for the... That's what it was. I do know somebody that bid for both the 8-scale offer it and 10-scale uh, nationals. So it, it's it's because, because it's too much fucking work, man. And you don't make any money off of no, it. No, you track. don't. The... You have to, you make, you start getting a percentage. You get, so I checked it. It's like you get $1,500. Yep. And then, and then if you have a certain entry amount, you get another $1,000. And, and then you get a, a percentage, you get a percentage of the interest after they get to a yep. certain amount. So and they have to get to that amount and yeah, then yeah. get there. And the reality is like, all this does is it covers the Roar RMT, which is the people that go to run the event. And it covers the trophies. So you know what? Get cheap ass trophies. No one needs their fucking participation awards. Give them like a little dog tag and says on the back, it just says, say, <laughs> do better. You know what? Because Raw doesn't, they can't, when I saw him in 2021, if it wasn't for Kevin and LCRC and his crew, mm -hmm. that event would not have been off. They worked there. He was telling Raw what to do, showing Raw what yeah. to do. So, but that's just, and then, but that's the thing. They, the the track has to get all the money for themselves. So they have to go out and get. So they they have to get. They got all the sponsorship money, but they have to go get it. They they get money off this the sales of pit area. They got money, you yeah. know, all that stuff. And Roy just comes in, plops down, already paid. Mm -hmm. Boom, we're here. Yeah. We don't give a fuck. We're already paid. Kind of. That's how I look at it. Yeah. So, so hey. Maybe maybe let's talk about this uh, this model of uh, just changing things, and you know, like let's you should make that a a, a constant topic. And well, I have been, yeah. I have been. So, but and then it just you go to the website. Nobody, it's no real info. How yeah. do I become a regional director? I don't know. Who do you talk to? Like, it's hard. But well, maybe you do because you're in that situation. But. Yeah, I, I yeah. know. I know probably a little more than most, just because I I know people in it, and you know. But the the reality is, like, <clears throat> what we really need to do, you know, if your friend gets involved or not for president, you know, like maybe he should even reach out to Clayton. All right, <clears throat> we definitely need to get regional people in yeah. first, because you're definitely. in order for your friend to actually be involved, he would have to have, or she would have to have. No, I don't want to put gender. They would there's have been to a, have... There's been a female president as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dawn. I don't think... I never raced with her, but there was a lot of um, probably, oh, yes. I don't know, hatred for some reason. Starting grid days, there was a lot of fighting with her. Homer Elman used to fight with her a lot. Tilt yard. Yeah, I don't know why. Anyway, but what I would say is, um, you know, we, we need people to cooperate. We need to change the, you know, the old boys club. And we need to modernize the rules. We need to make things effective. We don't need to actually, you don't need to have a big bang. You just need to do one thing and then you do another thing. And then eventually it snowballs and you've done a mm -hmm. lot of things. I agree with you. I agree with you. Hefty, this is our longest chat. Is it? No, I think we've done longer, but that's okay. You know, it, it was um, hopefully useful. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it, it, this isn't live yet. It's no. going to be live soon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, 
while you're in the States, enjoy the hate mail. Um, I'll enjoy the hate mail from Florida. You know, if anyone wants to talk to me about whatever it is, I'll be at Valkyria. When uh, is that? From- next weekend? Yeah, no, next weekend. Tonight. This weekend. We leave tonight. Right, but is this weekend common? Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. And yeah, so come on by. Let's have a conversation. Yeah, let's have a, have, have a conversation with Lefty. I'll be at in Myrtle Beach this weekend with all the Southeast races, eight scale races. I'm looking forward to that. So, Hefty, thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming on here and clearing the air about the New York Grand Prix 20, 2022 Montec. Okay. New York yeah. Grand Prix. And it was a good chat about on road. I've been wanting to get you on her anyway to talk about on road and yeah. all that type of stuff anyway before what's been going on. So I appreciate that. And remember, guys, you can you still have a chance to win some Sampadal USA batteries. Come up with some new questions, man. We're gonna have so, to. It's yeah, I, you know what? I need to go check. I think that actually um my buddy BJ Williams might have won it. Okay. I, I reached out to, to the goat. I got I got the data. I sent you the data. I know. I need to go check that again. All right. But Hefty, thank you for your time. Uh, good luck at the Nationals this weekend. Yeah. Have fun. Well, uh, have don't fun get at, eaten uh, by RCCP. any alligators. I will. Yeah. Don't get eaten by alligators or attacked by the super snake that now lives in Australia. And uh, have fun down there in Florida and humidity and all that good stuff. Yeah, it should be great. I just I pray for no rain. And I pray for a bountiful amounts of chicken wings. That's that's about it, man. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right, Hefty. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for your time. All right. Take care, man. All right. Be good. Cool. Well, that's it for us. I need to go now. Pack my bags. Get ready to go to RCGP. Thank you, Hefty, for your time. Have fun at the Nationals. Good luck to everybody going to the Nationals there. Good luck and safe travels to everybody who's racing this weekend, wherever you are around the world. Have fun. Enjoy it. RC is awesome. Be an RC ambassador. And uh, remember, RCGP is absolutely free this weekend, so you can tune in and watch that. Hear me babble on with Nick, which I'm looking forward to. The last run. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to being back in America. With that said, I want to thank you all for the continued support. Thank you to the NNRC squad. Thank you to the patrons of the NNRC. Thank you to the members, the NNRC YouTube members. Of course, thank you to all the awesome companies that advertise with the NNRC. They are InvisibleSpeed.net, TZO 200 Tires, TNR Fuels, High Tech RC, Beach RC, Mayako, Lugs Racing Tires, Papa Willis Traction Type, G-Spec RC Tuning, Sun Pedal USA, Racecraft USA, RCGP, House of RC, Clinic RC, and of course, shout out to our drivers, David Ronnefalk, Alexander Hagberg, uh, Jared Tebow and Robert Badier. Thank you guys for all the support. I hope you guys enjoy RCGP and Masters of Dark. Check out our social media too. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to try and do a podcast in between next week. We'll see, but internet's kind of iffy. It's going to be kind of busy as well. So with that said, I'm out. A safe travel for me too. Pretty easy flight. And I look forward to seeing all you guys that are coming out for RCGP. Let's have some fun and let's have some good racing. That said, Nitro's the glory. E-Buggy pays the bills. Thank you, Hefty, for your time. I hope I don't get too much hate mail, hate emails, but eh, I got broad shoulders. I can handle it. I'm off to America. I can't wait. Lefty is out.